Okay, welcome to part two of my series on servicing an Olympus BHTU microscope. If you've watched part one of this series, you'll know that this is a scope that I bought through eBay, and it's desperately in need of service. Uh, as, as part of part one, we uh, took this sliding focus block assembly apart, cleaned it and reassembled it, and that's now working well. And in part two, we'll be addressing the course focus mechanism, which uh, is desperately in need of service as well. If you've been following along in part one, then your scope will be in a situation where the back cover is off, your gearbox is out, and the uh, brass, the brass uh, rack, focus rack, on the back of the focus block here, will be removed from your scope. If that's the case, just uh, skip ahead to step four on this and you should be back on track. If you have not yet, so if you have not performed the service in part one, then I will show you now how to uh, remove the back cover, gearbox, and the focus rack. Okay, first step is to remove the back cover. This will give us access to the gearbox and the internal parts, and you can't do service without taking off this cover. There's four tiny. Uh, 2mm M2 metric screws that hold the cover in place and uh, as always I suggest you use a properly sized JIS screwdriver for these screws otherwise bad things can and will happen okay so this is the rear cover Okay, step two is the removal of this gearbox assembly. It's held in place with four metric hex socket head cap screws. And I'm going to start out by just removing two, two of the screws on opposite corners without touching the other two at this point. There's one. Now on the opposite corner here, I'll take out the second one. Okay, now at this point the gearbox is held in place by these uh, two remaining screws. Before I take those out, I need to reach around and grab the sliding focus block. Uh, as you turn this, the focus block raises up and down. And what I want to do is I want to grab this sliding focus block and support it, because when I take out these last two screws and the gearbox comes loose, that focus block is going to have a tendency to drop, and I don't want that. Screw three. Now this last one uh, is when the focus block is one going to really let loose. So there's screw four. Here's the gearbox. It came out. Now if you look in there, you can see that I'm going to let the focus block down, so I can let go of it now. Inside of here, there are two. Uh, brass shims. Those will either stay in place on the walls of the casting. Sometimes they may come out here, but regardless of where they're at, I need to account for them and take them out so they don't get lost during the rebuild. And that's the removal of the gearbox. Okay, step three now is the removal of this brass rack in here. It's a rack that uh, meshes with the pinion. It's part of the rack and pinion assembly. And it's held in place by a uh, socket head cap screw on the top and one on the bottom as well. Take the two and a half millimeter hex tool. I'll go in there, loosen and remove. I'm just At this point, I'm just going to loosen the top screw. And down here, I'm going to loosen and remove the bottom screw. Okay, and what I want to do is grab my needle nose pliers just to hold this thing so that it doesn't uh, fall out of place. And take her out. And that's how you remove the focus rack.
Okay, the first step uh, is to remove fine focus knobs. Got a little bit of wobble in the shaft there, so that shaft's a little bent. I'll see if I can address that. But uh, in order to remove the knobs, the first thing you have to do is remove these uh, disc caps from the ends of the knobs. There's a little notch right here. And if you insert a screwdriver of just the right size in there, you can pop the cap off, no problem. You can spin it around and do the same thing to the other side. Okay, so uh, now that we've got that, what we have to do is actually remove the knobs. And in each of these knobs, inside here, there's a little uh, hex, hex cap screw. It has a two and a half millimeter hex head on it. And that's present in both knobs. And so the way you take these knobs off is you put a tool in here, a two and a half millimeter hex tool, in each knob. Hold them stationary. Hold, hold the other. Not, hold, hold one stationary and relative to the other, so that you're basically turning them against each other until something breaks loose. Uh, it'll be one side or the other that breaks loose. There's no guarantee which side it'll be, but generally it's this side, and I think that's the one that came loose here. So I'll continue uh, loosening these things. And yes, it's, it seems to be this side that's loose. Once we get that done, we just pull this knob off. Since the, since the screw loosened on this side, this is the knob that will come off. Now this remaining knob on the other side still has the fine focus shaft attached to it, so we pull it straight out. And the shaft will come all the way out. Okay, so this is the uh, fine focus shaft, here's the knob, and that little piece there is the uh, plastic gear that drives the fine focus mechanism. Okay, now that the uh, fine focus knobs have been removed, the next step is to uh, remove the fine focus knob, the coarse focus knob, sorry, the coarse focus knob on this side of the scope. And in order to do that you need to make sure you have a good GIS screwdriver that fits these heads perfectly otherwise they'll slip and you'll never get them out without a drill. That one came out pretty well. And number three. You may have noticed that the arms slipped a little bit on the base here because I've just got it uh, loosely installed just for the purposes of this portion of the rebuild. Okay, so the screws are out. Now we pull the knob. We'll have to clean that up before it goes back on. And uh, on the end of this uh, this brass piece here, there's a spring washer, a wave washer. Take that off. That thing's filthy. And there is also on here. Can't tell it because it's uh, it's blackened by the old grease. But there is a uh, nylon. I believe it's nylon thrust washer on here. We'll take that off there. You can see that it's plastic and not metallic. Okay, uh, next step is to remove this thing. And the way you do that is with an Allen tool. I believe, let me verify this. Yes, this is a a hex tool with a one and a half millimeter head and there's two set screws. What you do is you loosen the set screws up, back them out until they're sticking out but don't totally remove them. Now 
and at this point this is no longer locked to the shaft and can be removed and and it's it's advantageous to have these sticking out rather than fully removed because take a pair of uh, pliers with some kind of non-marring jaws in this case they're just plastic and they don't grip real well but they will bite into these set screws so if I hold this secure reach over and turn the other coarse focus knob on the, the, the coarse focus knob on the other side it will loosen I'm gonna release that preset before I go too much further don't want to damage the spring inside this so I continue loosening until such time as this brass piece comes off and I believe we're there and there's a uh, coil spring underneath that, so you want to make sure you don't damage that spring when you pull it apart. So here's your coil spring. Here's the brass piece. And uh, if you notice, there's a another nylon thrust washer inside there. We'll take that out, bring that up. And uh, that's it for this step. Okay, the next step is to uh, just remove this uh, coarse focus knob with all the gears intact and this shaft. This should all come out just as a unit. Basically, just pull that out and we'll clean all that up on reassembly. And uh, at this point, what we would like to do is remove this uh, focus lock collar. In order to do that, there is a slotted uh, stop screw here that uh, this piece of the plastic comes into contact to prevent this thing from rotating too far. So we have to take that out. Let me try to set this up so you can get a better view. So you put this screwdriver in the slot and taking a little bit of force here because these can be stubborn. So let me go down on here and get this loosened up before I booger up the head on it. Okay. She's coming out, but slowly. And there it is. And now that that stop screw has been removed, this collar, you can unscrew and remove it. Once again, that'll have to be cleaned up pretty well. Now, inside of here is a rotating disc with this little pin on it. You can grasp this pin and work it. You can get this thing to come off. Okay, now for the next step of this, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to take out this entire pinion assembly. So that's this piece with the gear on it. That's, uh, that includes this tension adjustment knob and this whole thing. And let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. Now the way to do that is to take your uh, one and a half millimeter hex tool. We've got two uh, two set screws here that are that can be a real bear to get out of here. 
Uh, the best way that I've found to do that is to start with a bit of acetone and put a drop of acetone a little bit into the heads of the two screws. Let that work for a few seconds. Sorry for the squeak of the chair. Audio is bad enough, I know. Okay, now what I did is I take my one and a half millimeter hex tool and it's almost impossible to get these into the heads just, just by feel sometimes. If you can feel where it goes in a little bit, then what I do is I tap it. And if the thing doesn't go in, I turn it a little more and tap it lightly until such time as it, as it does seat. I don't want to try to adjust these if that tool is not fully seated in the head, otherwise I'm going to strip those off and that's going to ruin my whole day. Ah, so that one's coming out without too much problem. Put that aside and we do the same thing to the next one. So like here I cannot feel where the where the head's starting to engage, so I'm just going to lightly tap and turn there. It started to go in. Now she's in there. I've experimented with a lot of ways to get these out, including heating tools to melt the glue that's in there, using a torch and a heat gun to melt the glue that's in there, and I've found that the brute force mechanical way here is better than just about anything else that I've tried. Okay, so that guy is now loose. So in theory, if I grab this, the whole thing should come out. And it does. Okay, so um, last step is over here on here on this side. There's this piece here which is threaded on the outside, and it's what the whole the whole preset lock mechanism screws down around this. And it's important that you clean all the grease around the perimeter of this thing thoroughly. And uh, also, it's highly desirable to clean all the all the garbage off this arm and everything because as you work you end up with fingerprints over on it and everything else so you really want to clean that it's not necessary to remove this piece you can certainly clean it and everything with it in place but uh, it's also on the other hand easier if you can it's easier to do the cleaning if you can remove it so the way I uh, do that I'm going to try to remove it here if you don't have the confidence or you think that your screwdriver is really not up to the task then don't try because you just booger up the heads and if you get a burr that sticks up too high it'll uh, rub on this and then you run the whole mechanism. But the way I do this, if I want to try to remove it, if I do want to remove it, I find that screwdriver that the head fits perfectly. I give it a couple whacks and that, if there's any glue in there that has a chance of at least fracturing that glue bond so that it'll come out without, without damaging the head. <coughs> that one came out. So far so good. Do the same thing on the other two screws. Another thing that whacking does, if there's any burrs or any debris in the screw head, it flattens that out and lets your screwdriver fit just a little bit better. And sometimes you need all the all the little bit burrs you can get to make this work. Ah, they're out. So now that can be clean and all that grunge around there can be thoroughly cleaned and that's a good thing. Okay, I think that's it for the fundamental disassembly of the of the scope stand. We'll still have to disassemble this and clean it. There's a lot of work involved in just this piece right here. We still have uh, the gearbox to clean before we can put it all back together and all those individual pieces I took out. I'll clean most of those just off camera and then we'll start putting it together. Okay, I've set the stand aside for safekeeping so that I can work on this piece here. First thing I want to do is take off this uh, tension adjustment knob. It just screws onto this brass pinion carrier here. It does have left hand threads and I want to back it off this way, but since it has left hand threads I have to turn it the other way. And uh, first thing I find out is it's too stiff to turn, which is why we're taking this thing down and rebuilding it in the first place. I'm going to take a little bit of uh, 
foil, penetrating oil. Run it around there. And we're going to let that soak and do its thing after and try turning it again after a little bit. Okay, that's soaked for about a half an hour, so I'm ready to give it a shot and see if I can loosen this up. Ah, she is turning. Very stiff, but it's turning. Okay, so now I want to back this off. It's left hand thread, so I have to go the other way. Keep turning until the threads disengage. Which takes a while. All right. Inside of here, there's a uh, wave wave spring washer, which is disgusting. Inside of there, all this old grease. This is why the thing. This is why these scopes can literally lock up on you if uh, this used to be grease now it's like polymerized waxy muck so we'll thoroughly clean that of course now what's left on this thing is a plastic washer kind of a thrust washer thing it's uh, probably nylon and it's equally disgusting okay we're left now with just literally the pinion assembly and what this is is a hollow shaft with a gear on this end here that meshes with the gears in the knob. There's a gear gearing around here that meshes with the gearbox that translates motion to the brass rack and raises and lowers the focus block. And over here there's a retaining nut, a little round retaining nut that holds this whole thing together. And inside of here there's 30, 30 little uh, ball bearings technically I think they're called bearing balls but they're 1 16th inch diameter and around here there's another 30 so uh, we'll tear this apart and see if we can get it to clean up okay so off camera I took a, a paper towel and a little bit of uh, acetone and wiped off some of this grease here so that I'd have a chance of handling it without it slipping and totally totally messing things up. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do now is remove this retaining nut that holds the whole thing together. And the way I'm going to do that is first I'm going to use some more penetrating oil all the way around this thing. And now I'm going to give that time for the oil to do its work. Uh, be back in just a little bit. Okay, so time has passed and the oil has had a chance to do its work. Now before I really go too far with this, I'm going to take a Harbor Freight heat gun here. And I'm going to heat this up until it's good and hot. Hope you can hear me over the sound of the heat gun. Okay, I think uh, I think it's getting pretty hot, so I think I'm ready to shut that off. And if I've got that hot enough, I should be ready to give it the hooky mookie and get it loose. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a suitable screwdriver that will it is hot that will bite into this edge, just so that I can get a good grip on it. Okay, so I want to grasp that firmly, but not 
but not uh, but not close enough to this brass carrier piece that it'll mar that. So I'm going to make sure I don't do that because that has a bearing surface. Then I take these uh, non-grip pliers. These plastic jaws will not damage this gear. And then I give it to Hookie Mookie. And the gears uh, want to slip because it takes a lot of force to to get these guys to go sometimes. Eventually, you get to the point where it does go. It takes a lot of work. It is listening. It just takes a while. Uh, still fairly stiff. That's pretty typical of these things. And I'm starting to get little bearing balls dropping out of here because I'm starting to starting to get a gap here. So I want to kind of contain those so that if they, when they fall out, I'm able to find them. Okay, let me put a piece of paper towel or something under this so that I can, so that I can catch these easier and so that maybe you can see it a little better. Okay, uh, now I've put a paper towel under this. It's not a big deal for me when I'm working on these if one or two of these balls gets, falls away and gets lost forever because, uh, hell, I have a thousand of them in the drawer over there. That's not a big deal for me. Um, you can buy these on Amazon. These are 1 16th inch. Steel bearings, G25 quality is sufficient for these. Um, but if you uh, don't have access to that, if you don't want to have to go through the whole thing of ordering them, I suggest you just disassemble this whole thing over some kind of a catch pan so that you have a good chance of catching all these and not losing them. So now there ought to be uh, 30 of them that were in this end are out. Still some balls on this end. Okay. Make sure that there's none still clinging to the hardware here. There's not. Similarly check both ends. So it looks like we've got them all accounted for. So in theory there ought to be 60 of them here. I'm certainly not going to count them until it comes time to reassemble. And then if I'm missing any, I'll just grab a few out of stock and put them in. But I think it's uh, pretty important that you put them all in there. If there's one or two missing on each side, wouldn't be the end of the world, but you really do want 30 of them on each side. You can see on the paper towel some of the nasty grease and stuff that was just clinging to these ball bearings and all that will have to be washed away before we put together obviously. Okay, with any luck there's 60 of them in there. Okay, now I have some uh, somewhat dirty but some uh, mineral spirits and I'm going to use that to clean some of these pieces off. I'm just going to drop that in there and let it soak and I'm going to put, put that in there, let that in soak for a while. Okay, that's soaked for a while. Now I'm going to see if I can uh, remove this, uh, clean this off just with a paper towel. Sometimes, uh, depending on what kind of grease is on here, if it's the original grease or whatever, sometimes I use mineral spirits, other times I use acetone. It just depends. I think in this case I might end up using acetone because some of this stuff does not look original necessarily, but it's still in there. 
Let's do this side for a while. This side cleaned up pretty well, so let's give this a little more time in the soap. Now while I try to clean this, I'll have this one soaking. As you can see, cleaning this dry grease, it's almost wax, and maybe even harder than wax in a lot of cases, but cleaning this stuff off, uh, just take some elbow grease, solvent, sometimes heat, and just a fair amount of work, and it's not pleasant work, it's a mess, and the stuff smells disgusting, but it does have to come off. As far as the uh, threads here, These are left hand threads by the way. So everything you think you know about threads gets reversed here. I'll continue cleaning this off camera until it's done. No reason to make you watch that, that's pretty tedious. And probably the same thing for this one. So like there's grease in all the teeth. And I'm going to go off camera and I'm just going to go through tooth by tooth and scrape those out until that's clean. And this end here, do the same thing. But I'll be back when it's all clean. Okay, uh, I spent a good 20 minutes cleaning up these pieces. Uh, you can see some of the aftermath here. So let me, uh, let me get rid of this. Okay, um, so these are the pieces uh, here. So now I need to clean up the ball bearings and then we'll be ready to put this together. Okay, I've got the, uh, got the balls cleaned up. 30 bearing balls in here. 30 in here, that way I don't have to make sure I, I don't have to worry about counting them when I put them in. I just put this on one end, this on the other, and it's done. Okay. First thing I do is I take some uh, Plastilube brake grease and I squirt a bead of that all the way around the face of this gear. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the 30 bearings, bearing balls, take a pair of tweezers and just embed them in the grease all the way around there. It's uh, tedious and frustrating, but it has to be done.
Okay, I'm going to finish up the rest off camera. You don't need to watch all this. I'll be back shortly. Okay, uh, I've got 30 of them, all of them, installed around here. Now what we do, take this thing thoroughly cleaned, make sure that this uh, screw is facing down. You don't want to put it on that way. I've done that before and it will really, really frustrating because then you have to take the whole thing apart. So make sure the screw is down, lower it on here carefully until uh, it's laying on those bearings. A little grease might come out, that's okay. So now the next step is to pick this up, hold this so that it doesn't come out and apply a bead of plaster lube grease all the way around in that opening there. Okay. Now I'm just going to wipe away some of this excess, trying to keep it off the threads on the on this piece as much as possible. You'll see why later. Okay. I'm going to drop these 60, no, I'm sorry, these 30 bearings into the grease. I'm going to start, let you see me get started, but I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing because it, <laughs> it's a little boring. It's, uh, bad enough to actually have to put these in there, it's probably going to be way worse to actually watch it. Okay, there's the first few. I'll be back when it's done. Okay, I've got all uh, 30 of them in place in the top grease there. And what remains. Put this nut on here, thread it down, and uh, sometimes it goes easily, sometimes not so much. Okay, so what you do then is you tighten it down. If you look here, there's still some lateral play, or there's still some axial play in that. It's not tightened down enough. So we keep going. At this point there's just a little bit more axial play. Here I've actually gotten to the point where it's, it's snugged up. So if I try to rotate this, uh, it's gritty and hard to rotate it because I went too far with it. So once I hit this point, I back it up just a little bit. Back it off just a little bit. And it feels just about perfect. I'm going to go just a little bit more. Okay, now that feels uh, very smooth, like it should feel, no axial play, that's basically the right position for it. And now, the reason I didn't want to get any grease on these threads when I was reassembling them on here is because uh, the next step is to place some uh, some Loctite. This is purple Loctite. It's the, uh, of all the various Loctite formulations, it's the one that holds with the least force. Blue holds a little harder, and red uh, is considered permanent, can only be re removed with a torch. So you don't want to use red, and you really don't want to use blue. But what I'm going to do is put a little bit of it in there. Then I'm going to back this off. Then tighten it back down so that some of that Loctite actually gets in the threads. And make sure I find my magic point here, make sure it feels really good at that magic point. And then uh, that Loctite will set up 
and this will never move during operation, so it should be good for the life of the unit. Okay, uh, I wanted to show you a little bit about the cleanup of these pieces here. You can see how filthy and disgusting they are. And the reason I'm showing you this is because this is why we're doing this rebuild. Uh, look at what's in there. Look at what's coming out of there. This stuff is not acting like grease, it's acting like glue. And, you know, is it any wonder that the thing uh, didn't work? It amazes me that it turned it off. So, yeah, I don't plan on making you watch the whole thing for these parts. I just want you to get some kind of an appreciation for how bad this grease is. It's solid. It's literally solid. It's not grease anymore. And the same goes for this wave washer. You know, this stuff will clean off. It takes elbow grease, takes soap time. It'll clean off. And the same thing with the grease around here, especially the grease that's in these threads around the perimeter. So I'll be back when it's all clean. Okay, a lot of time has elapsed. A lot of mess, as you can see. These parts are clean now, so we're ready to put that all back together. Let me get rid of this disgusting mess. Okay, um, start out with see if I can take you in a little closer. I'm going to put a little uh, plastic little brake grease throughout the threads on this thing. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to thread this thing on. Ordinarily you would thread it on this way, but these are left hand threads. So the world is backwards. Close enough for now. Take this wave washer, put some grease here on the high points. Drop that grease in, grease down inside there so it'll stay in place with that grease. Now what I want to do is take this uh, plastic thrust washer, grease one side of it. There's a little notch in this washer that aligns with that little pin. Ideally it does, if you can get it to drop in there. There. And she's in there. Okay. Next step is to put a coating of grease on this. This little nylon thrust washer here, um, this is the old style. The newer scopes use a very similar uh, similar washer, except the newer washer is flat on the back and has a groove around the outside. So on on the newer style, if you were doing this, you would fill, you would do the same thing, but you would make sure to fill the grooves up. So that gives it a little bit of a reservoir for the grease. Okay, uh, this thing is uh, pre-assembled, runs really smooth, and is ready to go back into the scope. This is ready to go back as well. Okay, here's the scope, and we're going to put the pinion assembly in to start with. the camera just a little bit. Okay, I think we're ready to go. Now, this pinion assembly uh, has two depressions drilled into it. These line up with these two set screw holes so that when the set screws go in, they bottom out in these depressions and that automatically aligns this thing up so that it's perfectly aligned for, the, for all the gears to mesh and so forth. So what I do is I slide this guy in Maybe I can light this up so you can see it a little better. 
there's the depression, there's the set screw hole, and what I want to do is try to line those up. And if I look in through the holes until I see them, I should be able to get a perfect alignment. Okay, so that looks like it's pretty well aligned. Okay, I've got a couple set screws, I'm ready to put those in. With any luck, when that goes in, yeah, you'll see that thing, the whole thing moved just a little bit as it bit into that depression. So it's aligned properly now. And I can set the second one in. Snug these down a little bit. They don't. I don't have to go crazy with them. But yeah, so at this point, that baby's installed properly. Okay, let's rotate this around, and I'm going to install this piece now. It's the uh, it's the lock screw for the uh, for the preset lock mechanism. These three screws are not symmetrical around there, so you have to make sure that the all three holes line up before you start putting your screws in. That was intentionally done so that the the knob would come to a certain position on the threads relative to the threads. Okay. So I'm going to put these three screws in. These are, of course, countersunk flathead screws. And switch out and use the proper screwdriver to actually snug these babies down because well, you've heard my preaching on screwdrivers. Okay. That piece is in. Okay, the next piece to put in is this lock disc. It's a disc that's uh, polished on both sides. Primarily the back is what's important. It's got a pin here that engages with the spring, and uh, it's very important when you do this. I can't stress enough that cleanliness is critical here. This surface in here I'm cleaning now with acetone. There should not be any finger oils or grease or anything of any sort here. If this area is not surgically clean, then this disc won't slide on this as it should and your mechanism won't work properly. Similarly, I'm going to clean this surface here. Get that as clean as I can and give it a few seconds to evaporate and put it in there. Now, if I, uh, if I did my job properly, and it looks like I did, this slides very smoothly. There's no stickiness, no grabbiness, no none of that stuff. So, uh, okay, so my next step is by hook or by crook, but primarily as be being as careful as I can I'm going to take Plastilube brake grease and I'm going to distribute it around the outer circumference of these threads being very careful not to get any on that inside disc otherwise the whole, whole mission scrapped at that point because it ain't going to work if it's got grease in there. What's next is this piece here, however this piece is, as you can see, filthy. I'm going to hit it with acetone, being very careful to not get the acetone on the plastic because it will eat up this plastic knob. But as far as on, on the threads inside of here and on this brass insert, acetone should work fine. You can see there's stuff coming out of there. Alright, and once I get that part clean, I'm going to use some alcohol to try to uh, take off this crap here that's all on the plastic. Like I said, I don't want to use acetone there because the acetone will totally dissolve this plastic. But if you look, 
alcohol works pretty well for that. Okay, that's clean. Now the important thing, just like we were talking about the cleanliness here, inside on this bearing surface of the brass here, has to be very clean. Okay, so now what I do is I reinstall this knob, rotating clockwise to get the threads engaged. Now, if the knob is loose, if I reach in, grab this pin, it should this disc should rotate freely. If the knob is tightened, it should hold it. Okay, next is going to be the installation of this assembly here. Um, at this point, I've cleaned all the grease off of uh, this bearing surface. There was a lot of grease on there. I've cleaned that all off. There's grease in here. I have not disassembled or cleaned any of this. I won't do that until I until this is back in the stand. I also want to run a pipe cleaner uh, saturated with solvent through this inner inner tube here just to make sure that there's not grease buildup in there. So let's do that now. Oh yeah, that was definitely worth doing. Okay, now what we do is we turn around here. I take this surface here, apply plastic and brake grease all along the bearing surface, and that will ride on top of that nylon thrust washer in there. And uh, next thing I do is I just put this in let that seat and then when I do that it as you can see it comes out the side here okay uh, let's clean these parts up and get them ready to go back in uh, we're definitely on the downhill side of the slope on this won't be long before this thing is done I'm gonna clean out in here where this thrust washer used to be uh, down here, you can see there's definitely stuff in there coming out. Around here, there's uh, another thrust washer. He's right on this surface here. Let's get this stuff off the end. Okay. And while I'm at it, I'm going to run this pipe cleaner with acetone on it through here just to make sure that uh, there's nothing in that hole that shouldn't be in there. So this piece is not clean. Next we uh, work on the thrust washers. Oh, a little bit of grease on that. Let me try it this way. That works pretty well that way. Okay, I'm going to call that one done. Next, I'm going to work on this little wave washer. Get everything off of there. And I'm running low on Q-tips. I need to get me some more. Just clean the backside.
Okay, I've got this pretty well cleaned up. You can see little wear spots on there, but not really any grease left over. This is in pretty good shape, doesn't need cleaning. Um, I need to account for the one tiny little thrust washer that goes in here. Uh, for some reason it's not here. I'll be right back. Okay, don't ask me where I found it, but here she is. Okay, those are clean. Uh, let's put the thing together. All right, here we go. Let's do a little bit of uh, plaster of grease on the back side of this thrust washer. This little guy goes inside of here. And once you seat it, put another light coating of grease on top of it. Spread that out a little bit and wipe off any excess from here. Doesn't need to be there, it just messes things up. Okay. So basically that's ready to go. Let's bring the scope back. Okay. What we do now is uh, two things. Number one, I'm going to put this little pin stop. I'm going to screw that back into this hole here because it's a lot easier to put it on now than after after I get the course knob put on there and focus knobs are back in place. This is a lot harder to install, so I'm going to do this now before I forget it. Okay, got the thread engaged, now it's just a matter of tightening it down. Okay, so that'll, that hits up against that stop nice, snugs down nice here. When it's snugged, it really should be in that position right there. So I believe that's ready to go. Okay, so now we have to put this guy on. The thing that makes this devilishly hard for some people is this spring here, this coil spring. This this spring has to be preloaded when it all goes together, and it can take a while to figure out the process. So hopefully, I can give you some tips that'll help with that. Start out, loosen this up, adjust this disc in here so that the uh, so that the pin there is I don't know 9:30, 10 o'clock position, something like that. Snug it down so it won't go anywhere. Next step. Take your coil spring here. You've got two loops in there. The back, the loop in the back. Place it over that pin and put your uh, spring in position like that. Now the next step is this guy here. It goes on there and threads in here, made with these threads here, and it tightens down. However, before it goes on, this pin has to go into that spring to start with. So we'll do that first. And once I do that, I'm going to show you this before I, before I obscure it with this piece, but once I do that, then I'm going to reach around back and grab the course knob on the other side, and I'm going to pull it back until this shaft, which is protruding, I want to pull it back until that goes back into there and doesn't, doesn't interfere with this. Okay, but to start with, I'll just leave it out. And now put the pin over the spring, in the loop of the spring, and hold that right in position up against that shaft which is protruding. Now what I do is I pull the shaft out behind so that this brass piece seats as, fo seats as far forward as it can. What I have to do now is rotate this thing clockwise, and in so doing that's, uh, that's preloading that spring, and it will eventually rotate back around until the pin contacts the other pin on the on the disc that rotates. Once that happens, 
I want to carefully, very carefully, pull this out just enough so that the pins can cross each other and then push it back in. So now I'm on the other side of the pin. And once I've done that, then I push the uh, coarse focus knob on the back, push it in this way, and start turning it so that the threads, so that this brass piece threads onto that rod that protrudes. And while I'm doing that, I want to periodically make sure that this thing still moves and is not tight. If I get to the point where it quits moving and it's really tight, then one of two things has happened. Either that spring has gotten out of place and it's been pinched in there, which is a bad thing. You don't want to, you don't want to do that. Or potentially the tension, the focus tension knob is adjusted improperly and it's causing tension. So I'll just keep going, making sure it's still loose. Okay, now it's bottomed out and it's still, and it's still reasonably loose, so I think we got it good. What I want to do now, turn this guy around. I want to grab this thing with pliers and just snug it up a little bit. Not, not horribly snug, but just a little bit. Okay. So, in theory now, that's in. The spring is preloaded, it's ready to go. I just need to tighten down these two set screws to hold it all in place. There's one. There's two. So that baby's in. Nice smooth rotation. It hits the pin. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to check and make sure that that pre preset stop mechanism is actually working. Ordinarily, when this is loosened up, this thing will go. This thing will just spin forever. So what I want to do is I want to lock it down. Let me, let me say that again. Put it at some position. Doesn't matter where. Lock it down, and at that point, if I rotate this knob on the back side, it's, it'll, it, it's stopped by the pin in one direction and it'll still go in the other direction. So, let me say that again. Lock it down, verify that it won't rotate in one direction because the two pins are hitting each other. Then rotate this thing maybe a quarter of a turn or so. And then hold it in that position, hold the knob so that it stays in that position. And I want to release this thing. And if this mechanism is working right when I release this, you'll hear that you'll hear that stop, spin around, and slap. That's exactly what it should do. Let's do this again. Lock it, make sure it doesn't, make sure it'll move this direction but not that direction. Rotate it a quarter of a turn and unlock and listen for the slap. Perfect. Okay, we're getting really close to having this baby done. What I want to do now is take this uh, thrust washer, give it a light coating, wipe away the excess, give it a light coating of uh, plastic, plastic lube brake grease, apply it so that the grease is up against the brass piece, then uh, apply a light coating on this surface. Take the metal spring washer, lay it in place, and uh, I've got coarse focus knob for this side. It's going to clean up the inside. It's got a little bit of oil inside of it. Clean that up. Okay, she's ready to go on there. So um, you got a deep, you got a deep side here, shallow side. Put the shallow side towards the scope. Place it over there, and align your three screw holes with the with the tapped holes in the brass piece. And those are symmetrical, so that's easy enough. Now we take our. Uh, screwdriver, make sure we get the right one that fits it, and we put these screws in. And 
the last one. Okay, and let's snug them down. Don't go too hard. You don't want to crack the knob. But you want to snug them down. Okay. All we need to do is clean off the fine focus shaft, reinstall the shaft and the knobs, and we'll be ready to go. Okay, I'm going to clean off all the old grease from this fine focus shaft here. I want to put it together with new grease, and I don't want the old grease to be on there mucking up the works, literally. Okay, so that's uh, pretty well clean. I'm going to take a toothpick and just kind of run through the teeth on this gear to make sure that there's nothing in there that's going to interfere. I'll do that off camera. I'll be right back. Okay, so now it's time to put the fine focus shaft and whatever. It's time to put this baby in. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to squirt a little bit of grease in this hole here. And a little bit in this hole here. Then I'm going to use the shaft and I'm going to use that to push the grease in, distribute the grease through that inner shaft, that inner bore in the shaft, in the, I'm sorry, that inner bore in the, uh, that, that inner bore in this brass piece here that you can see in the center. And as you can see the grease uh, shot out, which is I guess a, to be expected. So we do the same thing on this side. Distribute that grease as much as we can. This grease here, let's make sure that it also covers the shaft, the whole surface of the shaft. Okay, so there's plenty of grease there. That thing's not going to be starved for grease. Now, we'll come over here on this side. I guess I lied. I said we were going to be installing it. Look at all that grease that came out. I said we were going to be installing it, but before we do that, I want to disassemble this uh, gear cluster here. I want to disassemble this gear cluster here and clean that all up. Don't want to forget that. Be a shame to do a whole rebuild and then forget to do that and leave that old grease in there. Take out these two flathead screws. Uh, there's one panhead screw in the middle. Take all three of those screws out. And this disc comes out. And gears may or may not come with it. And we have two gears in here. Pull those out. Grease has got that one stuck. It was a little bit stiff. Okay. So now, cotton swabs, acetone. Clean the grease off of these. While I'm at it, clean the grease out of that hole. Okay. Now I take the uh, pipe cleaner. Put a little alcohol on that. Run it in these holes here just to make sure that there's no old grease in there mucking it up. Okay, let's slide this back out of the way. And I'm gonna clean all these. I'm gonna go off camera. Would help if you could see them. Ah, okay, here we go. All these parts here, I'm gonna go off camera and clean them up. I'll be right back. Okay, these parts are clean and ready to go in, so let's uh Get her done. Shoot just a little bit of grease into these two holes. I'm going to take this gear here, this is the first gear I put in, put a little bit of grease on this post. Drop this gear into the big hole here. Okay, next is this guy. Once again, even though I've already greased the hole, I'm going to put just a touch of grease on. Even though I've already greased the hole, I'm going to put just a touch of grease on this post. Install it with a little gear side down. Make 
sure they spin. And the last one to install is this little plastic one. Once again, just a touch of grease on there. A little gear in. Totally covered in grease, that's why I can't see it. There we go. Now make sure these gears move freely, no binding. Everything feels really good. Okay, take a little grease. That's a little too much, but put a little bit. on the posts there and now this piece has got three big holes and three smaller holes the, the smaller holes hold the gears so uh, put the smaller holes over the pins of the gears and these three holes here take screws okay I'm going to start by taking the uh, pan head screw and I'm going to loosely install it in the middle here in the middle of these three screw holes then I'm going to take uh, two of these countersink flathead screws and they go in the two outside holes and when they uh, when they tighten down that puts this ring in perfect alignment so we tighten those down Then go back and tighten the middle pan head screw. Okay, now this thing is ready to go. Okay, the last thing to do is to put the uh, focus knob, the, the, the focus shaft, and fine focus knobs in. You will recall that this shaft is uh, totally covered in grease. Uh, also, this bore, both sides, there's grease distributed throughout that bore. So, depending when you took it apart, if the fine focus shaft stayed on the knob with the gear, you'll have to put it in through this side. If on the other hand it stayed with the other one, you'll have to put it in from that side. You know, that's pretty obvious, but I suppose it's worth saying. So anyway, I'm going to put the shaft into the bore, push it in, and when it gets to the end here, I want to be careful, I want to push it straight in and move it a little bit so that that little gear inside the knob meshes with the plastic gear inside there without causing, without being damaged, so a little bit of, a little bit of finesse is required there. And then we got to go on the other side and clean up the grease that was pushed out, and you can see there was grease pushed out, and it always is, if there's not, you probably didn't do it right. Okay, since I uh, wiped off some of the grease on this just now, I'm going to apply a little bit more grease to that. Alright. All that remains to be done is to take this, uh, I'm going to hold this shaft, on the, I'm going to reach around the back and hold the fine focus shaft so that it doesn't push back, and I'm going to take this knob, put it on there. And all that remains is for me to put a screw in there to hold it in place. And uh, hold the phone while I find that screw. Okay, it had rolled into a devilishly obscure location, but it has been located. So I'm going to put this in there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to reach around the back, hold that, hold that knob. Use a two and a half millimeter hex tool. <clears throat> Get that screw going. Run it down until it's basically hand tight. And now what I need to do, I need to take my second tool, put it in the other knob, and tighten these guys down. 
and if you look, you'll see that the, the thing is turning. Everything is decent. I had, I got just a touch of wobble in this knob. I had a lot more wobble than that originally, but I did a little barbarian work with the mallet, and I got that shaft pretty darn straight. So uh, I'm totally happy with that. So um, that takes care of the coaxial focus. The knobs are in place. All that remains to be done is to uh, put the brass focus rack in here, clean, reinstall the gearbox, put the cover on, put the knob caps on, and we'll basically be done with this one, uh, with this part of the mechanism. Okay, so it's gearbox time. This thing is really stiff. This thing ought to move very freely, and it's really stiff. And as you can see, the gears are gummed up, and it's a mess. And this is very typical of scopes, and this is why they behave very badly. Like if you just buy one from eBay and try to use it, good chance you won't be happy. Um, I got a 1.3 millimeter hex tool here, and I'm gonna loosen up these set screws. There's one on each gear holding them to these two shafts, so I'm gonna loosen these up. Next step is to push these shafts out so that I can get the gears out and then at that point the whole thing comes apart and we can clean it up and put it back together. Now, um, my go-to lately has been uh, Croil penetrating oil. I'm going to put that on the ends of the shafts. And I might even drip a little bit down inside here. And that just freed up the gearing a lot. It's not a not a long-term fix. It's not the real way to fix it, but it's way easier to turn now. But the problem is sometimes uh, getting these pins to push out. Sometimes you can just push them. Let's just try that. And if it turns out they're too stubborn to move, then uh, we have a couple options. We can take a heat gun to it, and then they'll move. Or, hell, if I have to, I can stick it on an arbor press and they'll move that way. Yeah, that one actually moved, so I think we're going to be able to get these out without having to resort to draconian measures. There we go. Don't want to damage the walls of the housing. Okay, as you can see, the uh, pins are coming out. Cool. So let's... Go ahead and push those all the way through. Now these guys are out. These gears are now theoretically free. They don't seem to know it yet, but they are, and they'll come out. There's still a uh, set screw in each of these, and uh, there's four of these little nylon thrust washers basically that are located between the gear, on the ends of the gear, between the gear and the housings to give them a smooth ride. So I want to remove all of those, make sure they're all accounted for. There's three. And one snuck out on the gear. And four. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go off camera, clean up this mess, and be back shortly. Okay, so with everything clean, I'm going to proceed with uh, reassembly. Get this gearbox put back in. Start out, I'm just going to put a little bit of grease into both of these holes. And uh, I'm not going to worry about what squeezes out yet at this point. Get it all distributed nice. I'm going to take these two shafts and I'm going to put them in these holes just so that they're just barely started. And so that they just they just stick through on the end. And I'm gonna go in there and take off the excess grease for now. Okay. I'm gonna take these thrust washers. I'm gonna put one over the end of each of the two shafts that are protruding inside the housing. Like so. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to back these 
shafts out so that they don't really stick in at all to speak of. And I'm going to uh, put the two gears in place now. It's important that you make sure that when you put the gears in, you put them in the same way they came out, otherwise your gearbox won't work properly. Well, I'm going to put a little bit of grease on the end of this gear here. Both ends. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop it in place, push the shaft in to hold it. Okay, so right now that's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to repeat the same thing with the other gear, making sure I install it in the right direction. And I've already screwed it up. told you it's important to put the gear in the right position and then I proceeded to not do that. This one, let's put a little grease on both ends. Okay, this goes in the top. Like that. Okay, this one has already been greased. It goes in in the bottom position. Like that. Okay, now, now what I do is I take each of these two remaining thrust washers, put a little grease on both sides, and I take the first one and I slip it in, reach the tweezers in, and align it so everything's lined up. And if I have everything properly lined up, I can push the pin. all the way home. Of course there's grease everywhere, don't worry about that at this point. And now I do the same thing with the remaining thrust washer. And it goes in the end of the other gear. Push it in place. Reach through and line it up so that the shaft doesn't damage it when I push it in. And that's good. Now let's get some, do a little clean up here. Wipe away the excess grease on both ends of the housing, both sides of the housing. Now if you look at it from the front, you want to make sure that the shaft, you have the same amount of shaft protruding on both sides, roughly. Well, that's close. Then we take our 1.3 millimeter hex tool and we tighten down these uh, set screws so that the gears are stationary and clamped to the shaft. Okay, now this baby rotates free like it's supposed to. Now what I want to do, and this is another uh, controversial thing, a lot of people say, yeah, don't grease this rack. Because if you do, things will stick to it. If you operate in a dirty, dusty environment, things will gum this up and yeah, you're right, it will. They're right, it will do that. Uh, on the other hand, grease reduces wear, and I'm basically building this for somebody to use in their house, in their home, maybe in their basement, but certainly not in a dusty industrial place, so I'm going to grease it just so it'll last longer. If the thing uh, ever gums up, I'll clean it and do it again. So I'm putting grease on all these surfaces. And I'll go ahead and grease all these as well. Now I might at least make an effort to take off the big globs of grease that aren't doing anything other than just mucking up the works. Spread it out a little bit, make sure it all runs free. And I'm ready to install the gearbox. Okay, before we put the gearbox in, uh, what we need to do is we need to take the uh, brass rack here. We need to put that in. It's held in with these two screws. I take a two and a half millimeter hex tool, put it through there, carefully drop this in position. 
Let's take the screw back out. And let's use a pair of needle and pliers. Try to get her in position that way. Once we do that, then we'll hang it. Awesome. Okay, so I take the screw, pick up the rack, and get the screw started. That's still loose, it's not tight yet. Reach around, raise the sliding focus block, and put the second screw in. Now at this point I can go ahead and tighten them down. Alright, so the rack is installed. Now I'm going to put a little bit of grease over the uh, face of the rack. I know there's a whole religion of people who say don't grease racks. And well, they're right. And there's a whole religion that says grease the racks, and they're right too. Grease definitely reduces wear on them, and it also allows uh, contaminants to gum, gum up the works. Uh, but if you notice when I took this thing apart, it had grease all over it, so Olympus had definitely greased it, and that's what I'm going to do. If I was building this up for somebody that was going to be using it in a dirty industrial area, then I'd probably not grease it, but in this case, it gets greased. And uh, if you'll recall when I uh, took this apart, these two brass shims that should have been behind the gearbox were not present. And I've, I've got a couple of them. I'm going to put those in. And the way I do that is I just put a little dot of grease on the wall inside the casting there where they go. And then I just stick these in place. The grease holds them there. And at that point I can install the gearbox and everything is a lot easier. Let me reach in and take out some of that excess grease. Okay. So now the gearbox goes in. It's held in place with four screws. Get my two and a half millimeter tool. And the gearbox goes in like that. And let's try to get her hung in there. Got that one started. That one started. There's three. And number four. Okay, now I'm going to basically snug up all these screws and back them up just a little bit so that they're loose but almost snug. And what that'll do is that'll let me reach in there and move this gearbox around. Uh, it has a certain amount of slack or, or movement free play because the, because the, the, the holes that the screws go through are oversized. And what I want to do is I want to move that and center it in both axes horizontally and vertically so that the screws are going right through the holes and not not up against them but right through the center of the holes and that will put this gearbox in proper position to, to mess with that brass rack and in order to do that the easiest way to do that right now I've got gravity working against me because the sliding focus block is pulling down on the gears and it's it's, it's binding this and holding that what I'm going to do is I'm going to set it up on its nose that point well you probably really can't see it but I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to do I'm going to align that thing so that the gearbox is centered you're not going to see it so much but just be smug in the knowledge that that's what it's happening that that's what is happening okay so at this point yeah now the thing moves freely Okay, I'm going to snug all four screws down. And I'm going to set it back up in a normal position. Put the camera back down. And we're going to see how it works. There's a little bit of groan. 
So I'm going to go back and repeat that. When you hear that noise, if you can hear it, that's because the gears aren't meshing properly. So I'm going to go repeat that alignment and see if I can do better. Okay, the second time was a charm. Um, this is moving now without the groan. Everything seems to be working well. If I rotate this around, you can see that the uh, sliding focus block is actually moving like it should. And it is so much easier to turn than these knobs are than they were when I started on this. Okay, so what that means now, put the back cover on, put the knob caps on, and just clean it up, make sure there's no grease anywhere, and this piece is done. Okay, now I'll reinstall the rear cover. There are four M2 metric screws. What I do is I install these all loosely. Once all four are in place, then I go back and snug them up. That way I get the best fit on the rear cover that I can get. Now hold this in place while I put the last one in. Whoops. Okay, and then I'm going to go back and snug these screws down. Go to the opposite corner and snug that one. And then the remaining two corners. Okay, the rear cover is reinstalled. Okay, it's time to reinstall these knob caps onto the fine focus knobs so that we can finish up this job. Uh, I'm going to start by cleaning off all the old adhesive that was on there because that stuff's dried out over the years and really doesn't hold anything at this point. All it'll do if I leave it on there is interfere with the uh, interfere with the bonding of adhesive that I might that, that I'm going to put on there to replace this adhesive. So I'm taking. Uh, a brush here and some acetone and I'm scrubbing that off. It's starting to come off as you can see. Let's keep it going. So you get the idea. I'll do the rest of this cleanup off camera so you don't have to bear through it. Okay, I'm back. I've got these discs uh, cleaned off pretty well on the back side. I've got some uh, pre-punched 3M300 LSE adhesive discs here. I'm going to use that adhesive to stick on here and reapply the knobs. Okay, uh, to start with, I'm going to take one of these discs and I'm going to try to uh, remove the cover this protective film here is removed and uh, this is the adhesive at this point what I'm going to do is carefully line that up apply it to the disc and now the tricky part is to peel off this without uh, without peeling the adhesive off the knob cap So there's adhesive on that, so that one's ready to go. Now I'd like to do the same thing for this one. Okay, that's the protective liner. Press firmly onto the knob cap and remove the other liner. Okay, so these are ready to go back on the scope. I just want to be careful and don't get any contaminants or dirt or finger oil on them. Otherwise, they may not stick very well. Okay, uh, let's do it. Let's get these knob caps back on there and call this thing done.
Take the first one. Put it in place. Press her down. She's good to go. Spin it around. Take the second disc. Press it in place. And those caps are on there. Now, over here uh, on the right hand focus knob, right now if I turn this it's very easy to turn, in fact it's too easy to turn and what that means is that when the stage goes on there and adds weight, it's going to back drive it like that, totally don't want that. This, uh, this ring here is the tension adjustment knob and it's what, it's what firms up that adjustment and we want to turn that thing clockwise until this thing starts to firm up and what you want to do is adjust that so that when the weight of your stage is on there it doesn't back drive as you can see now it's not if I loosen it it will so what you'd like to do is tighten it up so that with the stage on there there's enough tension so that it doesn't back drive and it doesn't lose focus otherwise your focus will creep out of focus and you don't want to go too far with that because that just makes this thing needlessly stiff. So right now, I'm, I'm happy with where it's at. I think it'll be fine. But uh, once the, once the uh, substage and stage and everything is installed on there, then I can do some final tweaks here to make sure that it's good. That wraps up the uh, coaxial focus assembly. Everything works. Preset works. Fine focus feels good. Don't have a lot of wobbly knobblies like we had before. I think it's good.